Hey, I'm Chase Washburn and this is a recreational homestead. We've been breeding and selling American Breast Chicks all over the country for a few years now. And the number one question I get is, okay, now how do I start selecting and breeding these for myself? So the beauty of the American Breast and the number one reason I went away from the Cornish Cross was the fact that it's up to me. I get to make all those breeding decisions for my own flock. It's not made up by some corporation. With the American Breast, you get to decide what is number one on my list and how do I want these chickens to end up because your breeding is the only thing that's gonna get you there. Number one should always be structure. The bone structure, the makeup of that chicken, can it run around, can it do the things that it needs to do, does it walk with ease, you know, it shouldn't be work for it to just walk across the yard or scratch at the ground. Is its keel bone straight? All those things that are just normal chicken things. You don't want a squirrel tail where that tail is way up on its back. That means it's going to have a shorter back, which is less room for me. Does that tail go to one side or the other? There's a lot of structural things that you need to look at and figure out. Are all the toes straight? Are their knees knocked in? The keel bone, that you're gonna have to actually pick it up and feel it to feel that keel bone. And that's that long bone down his chest. Is that nice and straight or is it curved? So these are all structural things that you need to look at. And if that chicken is not structurally there, well, you don't care what else it has because those are not things that you want to move forward. I'll probably do a video on each one of these sections one of these days. I'm not gonna go completely in depth to each one today. So number two for me, keep in mind this is for my breeding program and you might wanna change this up. Stay tuned till the end and I'll tell you why I chose this to be number two and why it might not be the best for you to make it your number two. But number two for me are blue legs and no black spots. So the black spots, came over from France in one of the imports. So if your chick has black spots on it, it does not mean that it's not a purebred. But I vowed when I started selling chicks that I would never send anybody a chick with black spots on it. That doesn't mean that they won't end up growing up and having a feather with black on it or a couple black feathers. For me, that's an instant out. There's no way that I'm breeding that one and keeping it in. So the other one is blue legs. When your chicks hatch, they're gonna have yellow legs. Sometimes, every once in a while, there's a chick that has a little bit of a blue tint to its legs, but most of the time, they're hatched with white, yellow, whatever you wanna call it. I guess I would call it white legs. These guys are a month old. You see this one, the leg color hasn't changed. This one here, the legs are starting to get blue. Now, I've been known from a lot of people, a lot of people have made comments on the YouTube channel, and people have bought my chicks that the majority of my legs are really dark blue. And that's because it's my number two on my sorting list. So I take a lot of pride in the blue legs and it shows in the end. Now, with that being said, I still do get full grown chickens that do not have blue legs or that have a white toe. It still happens. All these genes are not completely locked in yet. And that's because they haven't been over here in the US for that long compared to other breeds. Most of the time, you should start seeing your chick's legs turn blue around three weeks. Like I said, these are a month old. This one's done it, this one hasn't. This one still might. As of right now, for me selecting them, I don't take them out of the race because they didn't switch over in a certain amount of time. For me, when I do all my selecting, which is around 14 weeks, as long as they have nice blue legs then, they're good. Number three is the first one that is not a yes or no. Number one, structure. Is it structurally sound or not? That's yes or no. Number two, does it have blue legs and does it have any black spots? Those are yes or no questions. Number three is the meatiness of the bird. This is the whole reason you're raising American breasts, right? You want meat in the end. So the best way for that is to feel this front here. How big is the breast meat on it? You can feel that compared to the keel bone. You're gonna have a variety. Some are gonna be meatier than others. Weighing your birds is obviously a good thing, but their bone to meat ratio can be completely different. So you need to be feeling that bird too. 
Feel its, feel its chest. Doesn't have that breast meat there. Feel its legs. How are those drumsticks feeling? I mean, that is why we're raising these birds. So you need to get your hands on them and feel them. I don't weigh my birds all the time. I start weighing them when they're 14 weeks old to see when they're gonna be ready to butcher because our restaurant that we're dealing with wants a four pound bird, plus or minus a half a pound. That means we're shooting for four and a quarter pounds because we wanna get as much profit out of them as possible. So at 14 weeks, I'll start weighing them and seeing where they're at and dividing them up into different pens and finishing them. I don't think it's a bad thing to weigh them before that. I just don't have the time to do it. But just remember, weight isn't everything. You need to feel that bird, make sure it's actually filled out. This is one of the guys that was out in the grow out pen and I threw him to the side instead of going into that kill cone. So he's the lucky one. I'm not saying 100% I'm gonna keep them, but we're keeping them for now. So number four is comb and waddle. Look up in the breed standards and it'll tell you more about the comb, but it's not supposed to be so big that it flops over, but it is supposed to be a bigger comb. Now, because we're in Michigan and it gets super cold, I've been trying to breed mine to have some smaller combs. This is about as big as I wanna see it. Also keep in mind the environment that the chicken is in does play a factor in its comb and waddle size because it helps use that to regulate its heat so if it's in a hotter environment, the comb is going to get bigger. So if you're keeping your brooder too hot or hotter than it needs to be, those combs will tend to be bigger. That is a factor, but I wouldn't change my brooder or change the way that I'm raising my birds to change their comb size. I'm going to select them how they need to be selected in the end. Like I said, this is a bigger one for me. I am gonna use him for other reasons, but his comb is a little on the big side for me. I like this comb here, it's a lot smaller. Because you gotta keep in mind, just like grandpa's ears, they'll keep growing. He won't get any hair growing out of them necessarily, but it's a lot like grandpa's ears. They just keep getting bigger and flop over the older they get. So I'm trying to keep them on the smaller side. So number five is dark beaks and white earlobes. You can see this hen back there. Maybe I'll have to pull her out for you, but that hen back there, this one right here too, has that nice dark beak. You don't want a yellow light beak. It's supposed to be darker. And their eyes are supposed to be dark. You see this one in the front? I really like her, she's a young pullet. But she's got dark eyes and a dark beak. The beak doesn't have to be black, but it's supposed to be darker. And then the white earlobes, this guy's a great example of that. I mean, look at those earlobes. Almost pure white. And that's really beautiful, and that's how they're supposed to be. That's in the breed standard. But the reason it's number four for me is because I don't eat the earlobes. Or the beak. But it is beautiful, and it is in the breed standard, so that's number five for me. So number six, I got this two and a half year old rooster to show you, but it's yellowing. You can see that in his feathers. He wasn't like this when he was younger, but you can see it now. I haven't done a test on this, but I can tell you that once I switched over to milled feed, which is custom ground feed away from the store bought feed pellets, it seemed to make it worse. You know, and they're outside, which doesn't help. I mean, if I wash this thing, how yellow will he be? I don't know. He's not going to be pure white, I can tell you that. But for a lot of people, they'll put that as number one. They see some yellowing in that bird, and that's instant out. And I think that's ridiculous. Because I'm going to use this rooster to hatch out a bunch of chicks to try to find that rooster to replace him. And all those chicks, but one or two, are going to go in that freezer, and I want them to be meaty to fill that freezer. And you're going to be able to find one in that group that is whiter than his dad. So you'll be able to use him to breed to your new pullets and you're gonna get better and better and better. Meanwhile, you're putting a bunch of nice thick carcasses in your freezer. If you go the other way around and you start calling every bird with a little bit of yellow on them, you're gonna be filling your freezer with a bunch of snow white skinny roosters. And guess what? You don't see the white when it's in the freezer. You don't see the white when it's at the dinner table. 
The only time you see it is when it's out in that yard. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that one, but that's my take on it. Yeah, he's got a little bit of yellow on him. He wasn't this yellow before. How much of it is dirt and blood from being a chicken? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna wash him to find out, I can tell you that much. Well, all right, I gotta wrap up this video before I take any more clothes off. It's getting hot in here. But I wanna go back to the blue legs and black spots. The reason you might wanna change that in your program is for the same reason I was talking about with the yellowing. It really doesn't matter. You're not eating the legs. You're not eating the feathers. So it doesn't really matter. But the reason I put that at number two is because I'm selling chicks and people want to get a chick with blue legs and no black spots. When I was first buying my chicks many years ago, I got a ton of chicks that had black spots on them. And I thought that was ridiculous. You knew that it had black spots on it. You knew it's not supposed to have black spots on it, but you still sent me chicks with black spots on it. And they can physically see that when they're putting it in the box and you buy a box of 10 chicks and four of them have black spots on them. To me, that's completely uncalled for. So I knew right away that I wanted to breed that out completely. Same thing with the feet. No, people aren't gonna see that right away in the box. That comes later on. We pride ourselves on making those legs as blue as possible even though it does not make that chicken bone broth taste any better. So if you're looking for American Breast Chicks, there's a link in the description below. We are shipping chicks from here until fall, so go ahead and order now. Right now you will get free shipping. That will not last forever. So go ahead and order your chicks now. You can even pre-order. Unlike last year, we're doing a really small amount for pre-orders, like ridiculously small. The only reason I put them up is because I knew there are some of you, like the French Gardener, who want to make sure that your chicks are locked in and that you're going to get them for sure. So I put them up there, but I by all means did not want to run into what we did last year where we were behind a couple weeks. So I did a really small number. If you guys have any breeding questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'd love to answer them for you. Even if you wonder why my hair looks so dumb, go ahead, leave that down in the comments and I'll answer that for you. Or let me know down in the comments how you're ranking everything, what are you calling for in your flock, and what are you looking to breed towards. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.